So this has been a long journey for you. It has been a long journey. This is now four or five years, yes? Um, I'm trying to think. I guess we started shooting in at the beginning of 2007. So yeah, it's been about three years. Does it feel like something that was, is, I mean, because based on what the way you got into it, which is really just visiting as a patron of the arts, um, does it feel like the culmination of your work with the arts or like something that you've been moving towards over time or? I, I don't know that I feel as though it's something I've been moving towards, but it just took on a life of its own and it felt kind of natural. I just mm -hmm. learned on the job and it, you know, I just became so engrossed in the process mm -hmm. and I loved it. I had no idea of what I was getting into, <laughs> of course. It was, in a way, it's good that I was so um, naive, I suppose, or mm -hmm. uninformed because um, I just took it one step at a time. And um, I mean, obviously, you have to plan ahead for certain things. Right. But I don't think I had, for example, any idea what post production involved. Mm -hmm. That was a whole, that's a whole other world. A happy world for you, or a it w it world? well, in the end, it was because I found it really interesting. But I just mm -hmm. didn't know just how intense the process was. You know, there's so much to, to, to do. And um, the thing that I guess was the most difficult for me was sound, but mm -hmm. that, we can talk about that. <laughs> so you just, because I know you did multiple versions of the uh, the soundtrack. I did. Because you just weren't satisfied when you heard well, it? Or? I didn't like the sound. Well, the thing is that when um, when I was in post-production, we did color correcting, of course, first. Right. And I mean, that's kind of the way it worked with my film. I, I don't know how it works with other films, but and then uh, we did. Um, they did a sound edit, which they frequently do, kind of on the post production studio, mm -hmm. make suggestions on their own how to enhance certain sounds in the film, and then you do the sound mix. And the sound mix, um, I was part of the process the whole way, but I really was relying on the person who was, you know in charge of that. Right. And so, for example, they had something called a cedar box, mm -hmm. and I. When I listened to the film, oh, you know, after it was finished, we right. thought it was all done in Cambodia, and we were screening it to people there. I didn't know if it was the bad equipment that we were using mm -hmm. because everything there's a bit antiquated, right. or if I just didn't like my sound mix. <laughs> but um, I, when I came back to the United States, I, I got the best equipment I could and listened to it again, and I thought, you know what, they're just things that are bothering me, and, and I, so I got another sound mix person to take a look, and he said, well, one of the things you don't like about this is the cedar box, so we had to right. undo all of that, because it, huh. it's supposed to soften the sound, and actually right. it was just taking um, certain, uh, a certain clarity away from the film, and it was just driving me crazy. And then I didn't like the balance between the, um, the say, the voiceover and the music, and you know, and so I really brought up the surround in the music so that the music became much more dominant than it was before. I mean, there were times in Cambodia where I was actually humming, <laughs> you know, to myself, and mm -hmm. I thought, well, that's fine for me, but the audience won't know what to right. hum, <laughs> you know. So I had to, so I completely read that. And even the person who was my, um, one of my editors was sitting through this with me for a while because he had also had a, a, a post-production studio himself, an right. editing studio, and he um, he n knew so much about it and he was really helpful. And he and I actually kind of quarreled over how much music, it's a very personal thing, mm -hmm. you know, and he ended up in the end liking what I did, but mm -hmm. I, I actually wanted the music higher than everybody advised me to have a, you know, but I just think in a ballet music, right. you have to be able to hear it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Everybody it's a has a character in the movie. You yeah, know? it is. So. so, how do you go about? I mean, you're a person from a different world. You're a patron. Uh, you come from a moneyed universe, but you're not uh, a dirty hands person necessarily. And here you are getting into documentaries, which is the dirtiest hands version of filmmaking <laughs> you can get. It's very hands on. Do you, once you decided to move forward and hire camera people and all this stuff, did you just say, okay, how do I find the best person? How did you go about? building your little, your world for this? Well, originally, you know, I, I made a very short film with a student filmmaker, which was mm -hmm. the result of um, the subject of the film C being in a ballet competition. Right. And um, I had some film that existed from when he, I had bought a video camera to just record mm -hmm. his progress to send home to his parents. Mm -hmm. And then, um, 
So that existed. And then he went to the val ballet competition in Varna about five years after he came to the United States. And when we came back, all of our friends who had been following him said, oh, well, we want to see this. Mm -hmm. So I got a student ma filmmaker to put it together, and I had that, that footage from um, his early classes. There was footage, television footage, from when he had performed in Cambodia for the first time mm -hmm. for an American embassy thing. And so and how, how did you find the student filmmaker? The student filmmaker, I can't even remember, it was like <laughs> one of my friend Julian is an artist mm -hmm. and somebody that he knew, knew somebody. A friend of a friend of a friend. Right, and the, the, he just arrived, he was going to work for, two, he came up to my house in the country with his, you know, com with his um, laptop, mm -hmm. you know, a, a Mac and, you know, he had Final Cut Pro and all of that. Mm -hmm. and when I saw how easy it was, I just said, well, you know, I have all this other material, so right. why don't we try all of that too. So anyway, we showed it to our friends and they said, um, many of them were artists and art critics, mm -hmm. and um, not so many. Uh, there were a few dancers there, but mainly artists and art critics. And mm -hmm. they felt that it was really interesting that I should try to make a proper film. So, um, f because for them it was a really interesting look inside a world they knew nothing about. The ballet right. world, they only saw what you see on stage, but of course there's a lot more to it mm -hmm. than that. So um, I thought, well, fine. So I did a reality check with some friends in the dance world, and they said this would be a really interesting um, film uh, for them too. They, th they right. thought the story was fascinating and also it's unusual to have footage of a dancer from the very beginning so that right. you literally on the screen you see this boy develop mm -hmm. you know from just this grunting little body to you know mm -hmm. a professional dancer and just in the course of an hour and a half. Yeah. So um, anyway so I th so then the next challenge was to find someone to help me make the film because I certainly didn't know anything. So I ask around and my f dance friend suggested um, someone called Catherine Taji, who has done a lot of things for PBS primarily. She's mm -hmm. done uh, things with um, Art 21 and um, some dance films with the New York City Ballet, with the Choreography Institute. So she, she'd had some experience working with dance material, which mm -hmm. is, I wanted someone who at least knew something about that. So we started working together, and she was going to be my co-producer and the director. Mm -hmm. And after we went to Cambodia, and you know, we did that, and I mean, she was very generous because I had a very definite idea of how I wanted mm -hmm. the film to look and feel, and so we worked very closely together. But and this is clicking. It's like you're, you're, it you met her, and you just kind of. I got along with her really well. I mean, it was great, and she was, of course, because of all of her experience, she had wonderful, like the DP that we took to Cambodia was mm -hmm. wonderful, um, and later on there were other people that she brought in. But um, anyway, but after about two months of working on the film, I realized that this was a story that I was expecting her to know how to tell just from my relaying it to her and mm -hmm. then I thought you know what I just think I should try doing it myself so I, I had a conversation with her and she was really gracious about it and I said I'd really like for you to stand as co-producer but I think I'd like to try being the director mm -hmm. and she was great about it you know and she had you know she had so much other work anyway that I, I think <laughs> she might have been relieved I don't know that um but so she what are you? What she is continued the first to be involved. I mean, she she helped me find. I had two editors, and she helped with the first editor, and I found the second editor, and you know, one of the DPs I had known because he'd actually filmed C, right. um, and some huh. when I after he'd been there about three years, I I had a, a class and a couple of um, variations that he had learned filmed by a professional to send home to his mm -hmm. parents so that they could really get a good idea. Right. So that existed too, and I found him to do some more, you know, filming of ballet because he's. He's wonderful as a mm -hmm. dance cinematographer. So when you put in that hat of the director, what was the, you know, what were your first marching orders? What were the things that you kind of, how did that change how you were approaching doing this each day? It, it didn't really change th that much because I was so involved from the beginning anyway, mm -hmm. but um, it was just suddenly that the, instead of trying to tell someone else what to do, I just right. did it myself, you know, and, um, and, I, and I had to start Focusing myself on how uh, how this, y you know, we just started filming in a really quick way because mm -hmm. C was going back to for his annual trip to Cambodia, and it meant and if we didn't go then, it meant we were going to have to wait a whole year. Which, right. for a dancer, you know, at his age, it's mm -hmm. you just are missing something. And also, he was about to do some um, solo performances in. Um, at Pacific Northwest Ballet, and we wanted mm -hmm. to capture that on film too. So we honestly just got the beginning of the filming together so fast, we weren't even thinking. We just said, we're just going to get this on film and then we'll figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. And so it was at the point where we were figuring out what to do and how to go forward with the rest of the material and what we wanted to shoot and what we, all of that, that an interview and so forth, that, that I just sat down and, you know, made a plan.